As humans, we're well aware we need water to live. Fortunately for us, we live on a water planet. But that doesn't mean we have an entire globe of H2O to use as we please. So just how does the usable water break down for us? A giant 97% of Earth's water is in the ocean, so we can't use that. 3% is fresh water, but even in that small sliver, about 2% is locked in glaciers, ice caps, and groundwater. That leaves about 1% of the fresh water on Earth that is accessible and usable by humans. Let's imagine all of that accessible fresh water fits into this tiny pool. Now we'll get to some small numbers when we look at global fresh water. There really is a small fraction of usable and accessible freshwater on this water planet, so how do we use that tiny pool? In the United States, about 49% is using thermoelectric power production, while agricultural irrigation makes up about 31%. 11% goes to public use in our cities and towns, 4% goes into industry and manufacturing, and 1% is domestic use. The water coming out of our faucets largely comes from precipitation. Measuring how much or how little precipitation falls can impact how we live our daily lives. Elsewhere around the globe, in developing countries, agricultural irrigation accounts for about 70% of freshwater use, while industrial use is 20% and 10% for public consumption. In places where access to usable freshwater is greatly limited, knowing when and where precipitation may fall is critical to livelihoods. Precipitation replenishes these tiny reservoirs of fresh water, and data from the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission will help farmers, ranchers, and policymakers in these regions plan for periods of drought, flooding, and other extreme weather.